Ladies, gentlemen, and colleagues, it is my honor as Students' Union co-president to give the vote of thanks for SOAS graduation 2014. On behalf of the Students' Union, I would like to express our gratitude toward the people who have worked so hard to organize these graduation ceremonies, and to the lecturers and other staff at SOAS whose dedication has helped us to succeed in our studies. From librarians to counselors, IT technicians to faculty administrators, and of course, the ever-inspiring SOAS cleaners. Please join me in giving them all a round of applause. Here we are, the end of a journey. The metaphor of time as a journey is used so often that it's practically a cliche. But I think that here, more so than any other institution, the idea of traversing long distances and traveling to faraway lands resonates with SOAS students. It permeates everything we study. As someone who'd never been outside Europe, SOAS was a gateway to a world I thought I'd never step foot in. Not only through what I studied, but through the people I met and the things that I did outside of the classroom. Just being part of this community of unique and amazing people has left me with so many memories. Some good, some not so good, but all unforgettable, and all of them a part of myself, my new self, a more worldly, more confident person who the 18-year-old me would hardly recognize. I spent 18 years of my life in a small village in Essex, but SOAS is where I grew up. Around this time, there's a lot of rhetoric about SOAS students going out and saving the world. If this is your intention, good for you. All I ask is that you listen first to the people whose worlds you are trying to save. We must never forget that SOAS... <laughs> we must never forget that SOAS was founded in a climate of colonialist benevolence that often turned out to be anything but benevolent. But for a lot of you, saving the world was never on your itinerary. For you, university has been a series of dodgy takeaways, hastily written essays, and enough caffeine to bring down an elephant. <laughs> but no matter what route you took, to get on this stage. The point is that you're here. The challenges you faced on your way may or may not have been academic. Living thousands of miles from home, coping with stress, anxiety, and depression, or keeping up with the demands of a university degree while also being a single parent. We must remember that there is truly no typical SOAS student. Being here today is a testament to the struggles that you have overcome, no matter what they may be. As SOASians, we occupy an extremely important niche in the world. We are heterodox. We are unique. How can you study the social sciences and focus only on one hemisphere of society? How can you study the humanities but only one small portion of humanity. Most importantly, our education teaches us to be critical, to challenge the accepted truths and just so stories that we have been taught. Save for a few graduating next year, the undergraduates among you are the last cohort to pay the old system of tuition fees. Many of the old guard the ones who marched against those fees in 2010, like to sit around in student union bars, being
bemoaning the newest cohort of students, wailing, the world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost, for none now live who remember it. <laughs> but I think these fears are over-exaggerated at best. As long as SOAS exists, it will create generations of free thinkers, individuals with a strong sense of moral and social justice, people who arrive curious and leave knowledgeable and enthused about the roads less traveled. For better or worse, it's really hard to leave this place behind. Just take a look at the perennial clientele of the SOAS bar. <laughs> Wherever you go, you will take SOAS with you. The Guardian held a writing competition for students this year, and a SOAS student entered it. In her submission, she said, University is not just about preparing for employment. It's about a paradigm shift and about learning how wrong your 18-year-old self was about nearly everything. That said, many of you have no doubt been frantically revising your CVs, trying to figure out whether being treasurer of the SOAS Eurovision Society <laughs> will impress your potential employers. <laughs> the fact is, for all the talk of economic recovery, Graduates still have it tough. You might leave here with lofty goals, but find out that your charitable intentions won't pay the rent. But please, don't beat yourself up about it. Though our generation is expected to have our entire lives mapped out ahead of us by age 14, the fact is you can't predict the future. If we all became what we wanted to be when we were young, I would be Spider-Man. <laughs> you might well be scared to leave SOAS and start the next stage of your journey. On the other hand, you might be chomping at the bit to go on to the next stage of your life. Either way, the only advice I can give you is to slow down. When I was a student, I once did a shift as a tour guide for a group of Chinese doctors who were visiting London. We got into a minibus and drove to our first destination. I had my speech, which I translated myself, all prepared to explain the history of Tower Bridge. They got out, took pictures, and just before I'd started my spiel, they immediately got back into the bus and went to the next landmark. <laughs> if you're not careful, you can spend life going from one anxiety to the next. And I know this because I do it too. Remember when you put your pen down in that final exam? Remember the feeling of freedom and exhilaration you had? Remember how it took about 10 minutes for that to be replaced with, oh God, what do I do now? So our students are traveling types. It's practically in our DNA. Don't live your life like a bus full of tourists. There are no tour guides in life. No one is going to walk you through it. Sometimes you won't know where to go next. And that's okay. True happiness comes from accepting the that the course of your life will never be as you planned it. Enjoying the moments that come your way for what they are, and making sure to appreciate the friends beside you along the way. If life is a journey, it's better to walk it, and it's even better to have company. And not knowing where to go next is not the same as being lost. Laudza said, oh. Laudza said, and I apologize to anyone who, like me, hopes they'd never have to hear from dead Chinese philosophers ever again, but Laudza said, 
A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Like I said, saving the world might never have been on your itinerary, but it doesn't need to be. When you leave here today, whether you mean to or not, every step will be towards something much better. You don't need to go out and save the world. The world is beyond saving. <laughs> but you can go out there and make a new one. Class of 2014, all that's left for me to do now is to wish you all good luck and to send you off once again on your journey. <laughs>